is one that I have not seen. This Shock. is from 1942. I've heard of Gary Cooper. I can't think I've seen anything with wow. him actually in it, but this is the pride of the Yankees. Vince Scully, you brought up, said it's the greatest baseball movie of all time. I brought my grandfather into the equation, and I said that he cried in Brian's song, and he cried in this because he lived it. Babe Ruth's actually in this movie, and it's a true story of Lou Gehrig, of what he went through. Cooper plays Lou Gehrig. Uh, Walter Wintel's in it. I, I think Cooper got a, a, a whatchamacallit, I think he got an Academy Award nomination. It, it's another tearjerker. Everyone knows what a great player Lou Gehrig was, but how humble he was, and what a great story he had growing up and then his, his parents spoke, came over from Italy and they spoke broken English and they didn't want him playing baseball but he was that good and he lives the American dream he becomes a Yankee and then he gets this horrible disease called arterial lateral sclerosis as we all know is ALS that's affected even athletes that we know like Steve Gleason in modern times at the New Orleans Saints and and um it's how he never complained and he kept and then finally he set the record he played 2,000-something in consecutive games, and then Cal Ripken broke the record. And there's a famous line they show in the movie. He was walking out, and he goes, he, he addresses Yankee Stadium, and he says, I have to be the luckiest man alive. You know, and I I, I implore you watch this film. And, well, it, are, it is so you – you can go on Amazon right now or Netflix and, and hit the search button and get it. And it's black and white. And it's absolute tearjerker. But Babe Ruth's in the movie. Is this uh, the? Uh, is this the? I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Yeah, you know, I and consider myself. Sam Malone, so. Sam Malone stole that goddamn line at the end of Cheers when he because they did the same thing. Gary Cooper walks the Lou Gehrig walks into a dugout and it fades to black. And if you remember the end of Cheers, did you watch the last mm -hmm. episode of Cheers? Sam Malone walks into the, the end of, out of the bar and it fades to black and he goes, I'm the luck. Well, he said, I'm the luckiest son of a bitch alive. And he stole that. I said, oh my God, he stole that from, from Pride of the Yankees. All I could say is you haven't seen the film, but it is considered, I think, uh, I could easily have it at number one because of what it meant to the sport of baseball, to have all the old people in there. And then, of course, Lou Gehrig to this day is still, <laughs> he, 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 he's still deified. You know, and, and it's unfortunate that they haven't. It's a disease that he had that they still haven't found a cure for. And watch the film. That's all I could say. The way he handled his life and the way he handled it. And it, it's it's sad. Very sad. Well, and, and uh, that, that scene, the Today I Consider It, that's based off of an actual real life speech that's out there that's very well known. And anyone can, you know, go on YouTube, go on Google and, and, and call up both the Gary Cooper version and the Lou Gehrig actual recording and video of. And if I, if I remember right, I think I watched it both at some point and Gary Cooper's performance of that speech is very similar to the real life, including the echo effect of just the very heartfelt today. I consider myself uh speech. One of the great all time. I, in you know, did he did he write it beforehand or was that just all off the cuff? I don't know if we'll ever really know, yeah. but uh, it, you know, just a, a great um, a great sports moment that is larger than sports, but sure. still embodies the sport of baseball. Because for a guy to go to, you know, that's the other thing too. With with the consecutive games streak that Lou Gehrig had, that eventually was broken by by Cal Ripken Jr. But it took. 40 or 50 years for Cal Ripken Jr. to break that streak. That's a streak that hasn't been talked about a lot since Cal Ripken. But if you really think about just you and me and everyone else that grinds away day after day after day, most people are not Hall of Famer millionaires that retire at 35 and never work another day in their, the rest of their life. Most people work every day. And there's something about baseball in that era where where you know those the, the baseball players of that era had off-season jobs; they weren't millionaires for the most part. So the fact that Lou Gehrig was not a millionaire showed up every day, went to work, he did it. That's something that people can of any era can relate to. It's 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 one of those things. It's one of the reasons why I love baseball. It is that 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 work ethic that that thing where. People who aren't millionaires, who, who work every day, who never get the acclaim, who never get the herald, 
work hard and they show up every single day. And maybe that maybe they're great at what they do. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're just putting food on the table. But that quality, that work ethic, I think is is something that resonates through time. And yeah, I, we we you know the, you're right, ALS. But it, for the longest time, it was called Lou Gehrig's disease. It, you know, it's, still it's, is. And, and look, look at the effect. By the way, um, you, you talk about Cal Ripken Jr. He always pay homage to Lou Gehrig and said, "I, I, I and and look." Luke, Cal Ripken could have taken days off because Dave was, was making millions. But another guy, you never think about this. Uh, I, I don't want to go to football, but Brett Favre never missed a game. Played, what, 238 straight games? He played with a broken record. Football is a lot harder. You and I talk about, you know, off the record, we talk about sports injuries and football is the most. But he always said, I'm the, he goes, I'm the Lou Gehrig of the National Football League. And that says a lot when you bring him up in that aspect. And football is a harder sport to, to not get injured in. It's just, like I said, he, he, he was a great American hero, and, and and it also portrayed how his parents had to deal with it. These two people that came over from Italy, they had to learn English, and they watched their son go through this thing. And and, uh, and the wife, by the way, I, I forgot her name, not the actress, but um, she uh, she rallied and bantered to do uh, a, a, a lot of work um, philanthropic-wise for ALS and she was a long time his wife um, for years. And never, I don't think she ever remarried. Eleanor Gehrig? Yeah, yes. Played she, by Teresa Wright in the film. Beautiful. Beautiful and, girl. And and just interesting too, he's on the movie poster, but it is a little bit surreal right now for me to be looking at the IMDb page and third billing. Third billing in this movie from 1942. And Babe Ruth passed away I think in 1946. The fact right. that Babe Ruth is credited as playing Babe Ruth. That was insane. It, he was it, great. It brings up, uh, you know, it brings up chills to think that Babe Ruth played well, Babe Ruth in a film. Look at this dragon movie. Look at the symmetry that he and Lou Gehrig had the same relationship that, and we talked about it earlier, that Maris and Mantle had. Two Yankee, four Yankee greats, and they got along like brothers. That doesn't happen in every sport. You know, to today, you know, it just came out, and I don't want to get you off the subject, but Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez, two Yankees, did not get, get along great, you know? And they won. They won the World Series in 2008 or nine. But you have four – and look, Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez are icons in the sport. But back in those days, man, he, he, I, Gary – and Gary could have been any further from – Babe Ruth was a partier. <laughs> Drank beer and partied and had girls on the thing. This guy was a married man. Maris? Married man, kids, uh, he was a Derek Carr of the Yankees, you know, drank milk at dinner, and, and Mickey Mantle had hookers and, and, and booze in the, in the bots cars on the train. So it just goes with baseball brought them together, uh, and what it does, it brings people together, Sandlot, and hope that's the theme of your show. So Yeah, and, and the, the, uh, you're right, Babe Ruth would have been, uh, Babe Ruth would have been best friends with David Wells and Odell Beckham Jr. if he were alive today. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very similar lifestyle choices oh, that uh, those three guys have shared over over the years. 